Okay, let's talk about how we handle multi-select questions in SPSS. This will be our process going forward for how we clean and structure these types of questions which are very common in our research. And what I mean by multi-select questions are checkbox questions, questions where a respondent is allowed to choose more than one answer. Uh, super helpful for getting uh, lots of opinions about a finite number of questions. Uh, but when it comes to analysis, it can be difficult to sort out. So here's our game plan for how we structure these so that uh, the analysis is made somewhat easier. You can see when they come over from SurveyMonkey, and savvy uh, SPSS and SurveyMonkey users will notice that I have moved the type width and decimal columns out of the way because we're going to focus on these three columns right here. Now, lines 15 through 28 are our first checkbox items, our first multi-select question. We asked, in your experience, which of the following have the strongest impact on motivating partner sales? And you can see they were able to choose things like program discounts, non-standard pricing, value incentives, etc. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to change the name, the actual variable name, to something that makes sense for the group. And we're only going to change these first 13. We want to show a category variable with order in for the first 13. The last one is a verbatim uh, input box for folks that selected other. We're not going to worry about that for the sake of this demonstration. So what we would do is we would uh, select these. And I've already made the uh, variable names separately in Word and copied them in here. So I'll just paste those in there and I'll show you. This will be our style for this, all caps, words separated by underscores, and ordinal numbers from top to bottom. Here we're calling them impact partner perf items 1 through 13. All right, so there's the first step in organizing our multi-selects. The next thing that we want to do is we want to get rid of all this garbage in the label section and simply have labels that tell us what the particular selection was. Right now, the best place to get those is in the values section, because if we look at how our values are set up here, the value says value one is the selection item, and there are no other values there. We're going to fix that in a little bit. But first, the first thing that's important is that the selections that we want to put in the label section are all nested in here. So we would just copy this. Sure, we will. We'll just copy this. And then we would paste all that mess right into a Word document and uh, have a neat little macro here, which I can share with anyone, which will uh, get rid of all the garbage. And we will select and copy that. Go back into our uh, SPSS and paste those in here pretty easy right so now you've got all the correct uh, labels the final thing that we want to do here is we want to change this schema right now it's telling us that one equals whatever the choice is and there are no other options we're going to change this to say uh, one equals yes that means I selected it and we're going to add zero to mean no Okay, and then we can copy that and paste that into all these others. So now there's our schema. If you selected spiffs, you get a 1. If you didn't select it, you get a 0. Now, that's going to show up in a different place. You can see down here we're in variable view. We'll go over to the data view, and if we go to the section uh, that's close to where these uh, responses are, you can see that what we've got is a bunch of yeses and a bunch of blanks. If I switch to the numerics, you can see those are all the ones that are now equal to yes. Prior to this, they would have all been a mishmash of the individual choices. Very important thing that we want to do here is we want to recode into same variables 
and we would do this for each of the sets that we've created. Um, but for now, we're working on impact partner performance. So we'll select all of those. And in our old and new values, we will check system missing. And we will make the system missing values a zero. Add that in there. Hit continue and hit OK. If we go back to our data, what you'll see is all of the system missings are now zeros, which means they have all turned into no's. The final step here, just to recap real quickly, we've got we've changed all the variable names to a group name. We've changed all the labels to be exactly what the choices are, and we've changed the values to equals zero equals no, one equals yes. The last step in this will be to go to analyze, multiple response, define variable sets. This will allow us to package all of the items in that particular group into one segment that makes it easy to for us to analyze either by frequencies or by cross tabs or whatever. So we take all of the items that belong in that multi-select, all 13 items, that's our variables. They are dichotomies in that they are zeros or ones, and we're only going to count the ones. And we're going to make a new name for that, and we're going to call that partner performance and add that. Now we have a multiple response set. If we were to go into analyze now into multiple responses, you can see that where before only defined variable sets was available, now we have defined variable sets. So you can see frequencies and cross tabs are available to us now. So it makes the uh, makes the analysis a whole lot easier. So that is our SOP for how to structure, rename, revalue, and uh, bring together under a multiple response set our multi-select questions that come from SurveyMonkey into SPSS.